Welcome to Hoops High, Chicago's leader in youth-produced sports broadcasting and youth media education. Hoops High is produced by high school students learning the skills of professional broadcasting. Hoops High is the flagship program of Free Spirit Media and is made possible in partnership with After School Matters, the Chicago Public Schools, and Chicago Access Network Television. We hope you enjoy the show. Hi, you're watching Hoops High, the number one high school sports show in Chicago. We're broadcasting live from the UIC Pavilion for the 2009 Chicago Boys Basketball Quarterfinals. I'm Timmy Love. Keep it locked right here. <laughs> Introducing the starting lineup for your Hoops High. Y'all ain't ready. Fly boy. Uh oh, it's the H double and all you other high school sports shows in trouble. The state champs is back. I hope they stay humble, cause the trophy is a must. And all the teams for you a hundred percent game, hundred percent practice, no GPS needed because greatness is trackless. You can try to take it, but you can never have it. Physically examine show, uh, show you what uh, you lack. Yeah. Yeah. You just tune in to the greatest on the west side, south side, north side, hoop side. Yeah, every run be a shot. That's why you can catch us on TV now. Can TV, channel one nine. Every Saturday, eight o'clock. Y'all already know prime time. How the supers get put on the camera? The youngest in the game. Y'all know y'all can't handle love. Hoops high, hoops high, hoops high, hoops high, hoops high, hoops high. <laughs> Kenny D, boy, Ducks, Smash Brothers Entertainment. Man. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mark Hill. Ralph Morales. And we are here today at the UIC Pavilion. Very, very huge game. This is the quarterfinals. And we have game to game coverage for you, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, we have the Von Steuben Panthers versus the Hyde Park Thunderbirds. It's a wonderful game, and I'm happy that you're here again at this new installment of Hoops High. Let's get it started. The Von Steuben with possession of the ball winner in the tip. <laughs> huh? Oh Lord, just sitting here guys, I'm sorry about that ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> didn't know that, ball is out of bounds, it was about number 33, uh, Jamal Dantzler, ball in possession of Hyde Park. The ball is being inbounded by Martel, Martel Jackson. It's High Park get possession of the ball. First possession of the game right now for the High Park. Jackson swings the ball around. Shot is up. That shot is knocked down by number 23, Malcolm Griffin. High Park trying to press him. Von Stuber just beat him to it. Yeah, Von Steuben definitely looks like they had a speed over um over the high park Thunderbirds. It's Von Steuben right now getting cut into the basket. It's out of bounds. Being deflected by High Park. It's high Park coming in this game, active hands, getting those passing lanes. Von Steuben just needs to try to capitalize it, you know, try to pass it around him. That's right. They're swinging the ball around right now. Shot is up. Retrieved by number 33 and put back by number 33. It's a good shot. Dantzler. Swings it. From Dixon. All the way to Griffin. Oh, wide open. In the corner. The shot is off. It's kicked around a little bit. Shot is missed by number five, Martell Jackson. Ladies and gentlemen, remember you are watching Hoops High. You can watch Hoops High every Saturday at 8. Can TV for all the hottest high school sports actions around. First back to the game. Inside. No good. No good at all. The ball is now bounced around. Switch possessions back to back. And it's knocked out of bounds. Stripped away. Father number 15, the senior, 
Jerome Moore. That's his first. Jerome Moore picks up a foul. First team foul. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the USC Pavilion in the quarterfinals. Big game. Very, very big game for every team that's playing tonight because the city championship is on the line. You might just see a new beginner and a new coming of a new champion. Yes, I mean, as you know, Von Steuben, as you all know, um, beat Lincoln Park. It was a big upset for Lincoln Park, but, you know, Von Steuben just overpowered him. Same for uh, Hyde Park, beating Marshall. Kind of an upset, but definitely. I mean, definitely. And when you got two underdog teams in in the in the um, quarterfinals, you know, playing against each other, it only it only leaves more to see in the end, and and an unsure, you know, result. Ultimately, I, I have the slightest idea who will come out as city champions this year. When last year was the you know definitely the two dominant figures. Um, I believe a uh, Farragut and Simeon was a, was two guys that a lot of people thought, and I think Farragut came out in the end. So. I mean, right now I'm very um, I'm blind as to who I believe has come out um, as, as a city champs this year. It's at the line right now. It's number three, Von Steuben. Esteban Vega, the five ten senior, shooting his second shot. It's good. It's a scores. Six to five. Ball is being swung around, swung around by Hyde Park. We got a guy in the middle right now. Hyde Park continues to swing the ball. Great ball movement. Oh, take it to the cup. Can't com complete the basket. That was number three with the miss. Fabian Harris. Oh, gets it blocked. Number 15, Jerome Moore. Oh, Jamon, Jerome Moore grabs a foul for number 34. Ron Steuben, Jermaine Hyler. Oh, excuse me. 22, Justin Parnell with the foul. The reach in. As, um, Moore was, I mean, as Griffin was going to the basket, full force. As Griffin gets ready to say bound it. Fisher's getting everything situated. Right now, Fist is looking for like a towel or something to wipe off the, uh, trying to wipe off the um, the ball without I take it. So <laughs> that's what they do. It's a great job by the, by the officials. Make sure the ball didn't have too much extra perspiration, you know, I want to slip up and lose the ball. This ball is shot out to Mia Court. Roll back around, number five, Jackson, the floor general. Controlling the floor right now. Swinging it to three, Fabian Harris. Harris to Griffin. Griffin with the long three ball. You can count it. And, uh, you know, early when I spoke to Donnie Kirksey, head coach for uh, High Park Thunderbirds, he notified me that Malcolm Griffin and Anthony Dixon, Martel Jackson, Fabian Harris, some of the key players, Jerome Moore for High Park, right. so expect them to score as many baskets as they possibly can as Griffin inside. Yeah. No good. Too hard off the backboard for Griffin. Ball is then retrieved. Put back up. We got like three or four rebounds on the um, Ohio Parks behalf. Wonderful offensive rebounding display. And I mean, when you got five guys that you can say is, is key players, that's that's just a wonderful thing to have, you know, because that's, that's a starting that's a starting five, you know, and, and five guys that's on the court that's reliable to execute whenever necessary. So, just to have those five guys on the court at the same time, I, I take it as a wonderful experience for the coach because he feel like he'll have to really coach as hard as he have to do with any other guys. As you can count the basket. By number 15, Jerome Moore. Vaughn Steuben just now getting wrapped up in the press. The speed seems like it's no longer an asset. Seems like they're moving a little too fast. Three ball is up, no good. Shot is then retrieved and is taken out by number 33, Jamal Dassler. Great putback. Yes. Scores now 10 to 8. High Parks with the lead. It's Jackson swinging the ball 15 more. More back to Jackson. Jackson keeping the control of the floor, slows things down a little bit. 
Got a wide open more again. Out wide open to the deep 35, Anthony Dixon. One thing with Hyde Park, they're really taking advantage of these open shots, and they're, they're, they're knocking them down. You know, most teams in the beginning of the first quarter, at least even in the first half sometimes, have a, a hard time of warming up at the three ball. But, I mean, Hyde Park coming out, and, I mean, they're, they're taking every shot, and they're making the count. Yes, indeed. And if you wonder who has, Hoops High is produced by, Hoops High is produced by high school students learning to be professional broadcasters. All of the camera work, announcing, directing, and everything else is done by young students. What you see, ladies and gentlemen, is what you get. That's right. Get back to the game. You got to slip up with the ball. It's 34. Retrieves it. Wide oh, open. Air shoots ball. that air ball. That was number 34. Uh, Jermaine Heiler. As we got a, another wrestling match with the ball. Back to Fabian. 32 from Von Steuben. Floyd Campbell. With a quick cut to the basket and the layup, you can count it. You got a timeout. As you know, Hyde Park is really coming out full, full force, just racing, and Von Steuben is somehow staying with him. But uh, I can, I can definitely see why they say it's an upset at Lincoln Park because you just don't see it, it's this tightness or the efficiency within Von Steuben's playing style, as you'll see in the Lincoln Park. You know, at least this year. But they are keeping up with him, so it's, a, it's still a game to watch, ladies and gentlemen. As the score stands, it's 13 to 10. Uh, High Park leads by three. And one other thing you must know about uh, Vince Carter, head coach for Von Steuben, he helps run the um, Chicago Public League Basketball Coaches Association. So he's a big part of that, uh, you know, uh, organization there. That's right. I mean, it's just a great thing to do, you know, to be – to have a coach that's that's a leader of, of many coaches you know so you gotta you got a lot of knowledge and wisdom just from that one coach that you can learn the ball is tipped out of bound by Hyde Park number five Martell Jackson big stays possession Von Steuben will keep the ball oh ball is yeah that was a bad pass the ball is stolen we got a fast break, ladies and gentlemen. Harris. Oh, man. I thought we had something going on right there. Half line, number 35, Anthony Dixon kicks it out. Three balls, no good. And Von Stubbs retrieves, retrieves that rebound. I mean, a lot of opportunities I've seen Hyde Park having on that one. Missed layups, missed tips. I mean, they got to tighten up with the net. The shooting is great, but the layups is what really count. And if they can't, they can't execute those layups, then it's no good. Exactly, because, you know, what happens when you get when you lose about four point six points? You must attack the basket and not exactly. shoot a, a three ball or, or even a two. But then yeah, drawing fouls and everything else comes in into play also with that. Substitutions coming in number twelve coming in the game. Nolan Williams. Once again, High Park applying that pressure to the to the inbound play, As, and once again the rebound is is a putback. Too many second chance play points. Put back but, by Nolan Williams. That's right. Too many second play chance points. I feel that High Park is giving um uh, Von Steuben. Far oh. three point is shot by Jackson. I mean, excuse me, Griffin just misses. It. Fight for the rebound down low. Boy, trying to tip it around, couldn't get it. Number three, Fabian Harris comes out with the rebound. Pretty a lot of speed and agility. The guards have for Von Steuben. They really. Just know how to move the ball around and get get the teams working. It's like heat molecules, you know, exactly. within the game. It just just makes everything else speed up. Ooh. Whatever they touch, the block. This ball is then thrown out of bounds. Now 23, Malcolm Griffin you got a sub. It's number 53, Brandon Denson. High Park coming out with some very uh. Active hands, as I said earlier, defense has been on point, I must say, for Hyde Park. Von Steuben just needs to kind of pick it up a little bit more and convert on these easy baskets that they've been missing. Definitely, I agree with you. So you got 34 losing the ball and getting it back, jumping on the floor. Once again, I just don't see, I just really don't see Von Steuben being, being like cautious with the ball. You know, they, they're really being a little careless if you ask me myself. We have a sub, number 23, Kefri Bailey. 
13 to 12, Howard Park's way. One minute and 11 seconds left in his first quarter here at the UIC Pavilion. Oh, just deflected out of bounds. Good defense by Griffin. That's right. Inbound again, Von Steuben getting another chance at it. Inbound, in traffic, and it's oh. stolen away. Jerome Moore. Whoa, a little too high flying. And the ball is then blocked out of bounds by number 33, Jamal Dantzler. Man, that was a high flying one right there. I really thought he was going to finish with a powerful, you know, dunk at the end. Put a lot of emphasis on the play and probably change the momentum of the game. But um, <laughs> a missed dunk is just as bad as a turnover. See here, Coach Vince Carter. Von Steuben. Griffin to Harris. Harris fakes the shot. Swings it off to Jackson. Count it. Jackson with the three point. Thirty-two point nine second remaining first quarter. Quarter final action. It's number twelve inbounds for Hyde Park. <laughs> Sharif. He hold the ball. It's a slight. No, oh, there we go. It's a slight pause in the gameplay. Back to the game, ladies and gentlemen. You have number three bring it down, Fabian Harris. Harris swings. Jackson. Jackson back to Harris. Harris back to Jackson. Letting the clock run, going for that last shot. You know how to play go. Oh, off balance. Griffin. Wonderful shooting displayed by Griffin so far. He's got an easy inside the basket, Sharif. And, and look at the pressure that Hyde Park is. Hyde Park really applying the pressure here. As we have a wonderful first quarter, I'm going to toss it to the sidelines for Jimmy Love in a quick interview. Hi, my name is Jimmy Love. I'm here with Jahari, a High, uh, High Park fan. So, Jahari, what brings you out to the game today? I'm just here to support the team. I believe they're going to go all the way. So, I'm here. I'm ready. You ready? So, I mean, I was talking to you earlier, so you sound pretty confident that uh, – that High Park gonna win, but Von Stuber look like they putting up a fight. You pretty sure that uh, High Park gonna win? Most definitely, most definitely. I got on my lucky shoes. I'm ready. I'm pumped. All right, y'all. She got her lucky shoes on. We gonna see, we gonna see you up there uh, going crazy upstairs. Yeah, you might see me up there do a little wave, throw my hands up, do something. All right, go ahead, get up there, man. Enjoy the game. We are gonna toss it back over to the announcers. It is our job to let you feel the energy that we have going on here at the UIC Pavilion. Once again, it's Mark Hill alongside. Ralph Morales. And we are here at the UIC Pavilion, ladies and gentlemen, watching the first game of the Chicago Public League quarterfinals. We have Hyde Park and Von Steuben as we get underway in the second quarter. Ball is passed over to Griffin. Griffin gets in the hole. And I think the charge is being called on Griffin. Offensive foul. Very, very smart play by number 33, Jamal Dantzler. As he's trying to get some kind of change of momentum and get his way in their favor more so they can just have that, you know, that push that they probably had at Lincoln Park. Because right now the skills just is not looking up to par as far as, as far as what Hyde Park has to offer. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Hoops Eyes, a flagship program of Free Spirit Media is running a partnership with After School Matters, the Chicago Public Schools, and Can TV. This is a team effort all around. Whoa. We are grateful for our partners to make this possible. Right back to the game. That's right. The shot is up and it's good. You can count that one. Dantzler. Jackson, top of the key is Von Steuben kind of looks like they're in a 2 3 zone defense. That's right. They, they have been in this 2 3 zone all game long so far. Um, as you notice, a lot of the passing that um, High Park has been doing and a lot of the perimeter points that they have gained has been because they've been in this 2 3 zone. Something that you will want from a team. I mean, that's the reason you be in the 2 3 zone to get the perimeter shots and grab those those charges. So, I mean, Von Steuben's defense is working just as planned. The only problem is the offense is not really, it's not connected. It's not a lot of execution as it should be. Shot is up, and it's good. You can count that. Anthony Dixon. But I kind of think High Park is kind of 
shooting Von Steuben out the out the zone. I mean, true. Our park is having have, well has has had a, um, a lot of open three pointers, a lot of mm -hmm. open two pointers, and they've been knocking them down. That's that's true. So I expect Von Steuben to switch up this defense going to a man going into this second half. And I can agree with you more on that. I definitely agree. Too many shots has been has been completed, and it's time to switch up the zone or go into another another kind of um, defense other than the zone. This ball's being pushed up a court now. That's number 23, Bailey. Still controlling the floor. Gives the man's little shake and bake. Kicks to the corner. Dumped down to the big guy down low. And it's up. A little off balance, but he misses it. Moore with the rebound. Wow. Wow. You can see the athleticism in Fabian Harris. The way he moves around the defenders and then gets in the air and hangs amongst the big guys. Wonderful play by Harris. Harris is a guard, junior. Whoa. At 5'10". That's right. And, I mean, Hyatt Park is really bringing out the big guns. They're not letting anything go past. They're not even – they're playing the passing lanes hard. Exactly. And, and, and it shows – the hunger definitely shows for Hyatt Park right now. We have a sub coming out for Von Steuben. Have number three, uh, Esteban, Esteban Vega coming out. One of the guys that was actually, you know, a, a guy to watch. Wonder what Coach Carter has in store for us right now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you wonder what you are watching, you're watching Hoops High. Who is playing uh -oh. is Von Steuben and Howie Park. Bring back to the game. Harris. Count it. Did you see that? The defense was on point and the offense was, look at that. A contested shot and he still, he still completes it. I mean, it's, it's just... The proof is in the pudding, you know. And High Park is definitely taking every possession and, and putting some value to it. And and the points is on the board. You know, they have a they have a twenty four, they have a ten point lead over over Von Steuben now, making that deficit an extra seven from the last quarter. As we stand stands six twenty eight on the clock. Twenty four to fourteen is your score. High Park, as Mark just said, is just overpowering Von Steuben inside and out. That's right. It's coming out of this timeout. I don't know Coach Carter just just want his kids to, you know, to, to actually play with some heart now, you know, and, and make the game a little more, a little more valuable than what, what, they're, what they're giving to it. Ball is now inbounded, given to 23 Bailey. Bailey brings it up court. Pretty nice handle. Drives to the basket hard. Couldn't complete the shot. Rebound pulled down. Ball's given to Jackson. Jackson with the shake and bake. Swing to the big guy, number 35, who already knocked one down, which is Dixon. Wonderful. I love seeing big guys hit those long-range shots. It's high parking and man defense. Down to Bailey in the corner. That's the wrong place to be right now with high parks defensive intensity. The ball is then moved around. Dixon kicks it back to Bailey in the corner. Bailey in the corner contested, oh. overshoots. The ball is then knocked out of bounds by Von Steuben. Puts too much in it, Bailey misses it. That's right. I mean, but the Bailey had a, that was one of the worst shots I think he has taken so far in the game with a, with a, con, with a defender right up on him in that corner. It's not, the, it's not the shot that you want to look for. I mean, if it's the shot you're going to take, then you should make sure, it's, you know, you got the shot right. Exactly. So coming down once again, Jackson, the ball. Penetrating. Oh, Jackson to the basket. Oh, the steal. Oh. It was just so, it's, it's, I don't know the word. Oh, and the stuff by Dixon to finish it off. Very amazing game right now. There's just intensity, electrifying moves and electrifying game right now that we're sitting here watching. The, the steal was what kicked it off. Exactly. The steal. He tried to wrap it. He, he, just, he just snatched it. Like, right. <laughs> he like gave it to him. It looked like a handoff. It was just too good to be true. And then the finish, just as good by Dixon. Wonderful play. I think Hyde Park really, really came to play. I mean, it, I don't, I don't think it was an upset. I think they really was just well prepared for what was ahead of them, and they're, and they're still prepared. You know, as I said earlier, coming into this game, I kind of thought that Hyde Park was more ready. You know, they was practicing exactly. longer, as you said. Yeah, they were. You know, and they just came to play hard and come home. Well, leave home with a victory. Yeah, I never expected. I must say, I never expected Hyde Park to come out the way they did tonight and, and really deliver as far as the scene. I mean. 
they're, they're making them, they're making them believe out of me. You know, like like the LeBron James commercials. Like I'm a believer now. I'm a witness. So this this is crazy. High Park is definitely on the map. Shot is up. It's no good. That shot was missed by number 33, Avon Steuben, Jamal Dantzler. Another shot is put up. Count it. You can count those. It's Campbell with the with the putback. I mean, that's that's what Von Stuben has making all the points up off um, off of mainly the putbacks, the second chance points. And that's a high part, you know, that's a flaw of high parts that they're capitalizing on, just to say. As uh, Floyd Campbell is one of the key players when I spoke to Vince Carter, head coach for Von Stuben, this it's also Floyd, Floyd Campbell, Jamal Dancer, um Justin Purnell, and es Esteban Vega. So, that's right. Uh, kind of the key players for Von Steuben. As they hold four guys and not five. Even though the score is 26 to 16, you know, both teams still have key players. That's right, yeah, definitely. Every team should have a key pe player, you believe, you know, that's just that leader, if that's all that, that there is. But you do you do look for those those them leader mentalities and those leader potentials that you want to bring out of players. You got a sub, Tony. Uh, Jamon Craig coming in right now with four minutes and three seconds on the clock. Once again, Jackson holding down the, the floor control with no hesitation. I mean, excuse me, Harris. This is between Harris and Jones, both passing the ball around. Still moving around. Still applying that pressure, High Park is just not giving up. Even if they, even if they lose possession of the ball, High Park is just keeping up the, the momentum as far as defense goes. The fake pass and the shot he has traveled. Oh, Jermaine! He's one, one too many moves. As you see here, when he made the step, he went for the fake pass. He made an extra step there, trying to fake out his defender, and in turn, gave the ball up. You know, came out with a turnover. Von Stuber now in the man defense. As I mentioned earlier, I knew they was gonna. Come in that senses and get back in that man defense. Yeah, definitely. Any smart coach will see as a, if they're a smart coach, or any coach, <laughs> period, <laughs> will notice But if you're going to sit in a two zone, you know the reason that you do so. And if you're going to go in the man, you know the reason that you do so also. You want them to shoot in two, in two three zones, and you want them to drive in three twos. I mean, it's, it's elementary. So, I mean, even even the coach noticed that and did as you had said, switch them up to a man to man and bring a little more pressure towards High Park. As they now at the line, number 12. Um, Akwe Sharif. Yes, uh, free throws is a very, very, very big factor. Of the game. That's right. You can't stress it any harder than what we do. Free throws is a very, very big factor. I mean, it come down to that last free throw that you just missed two minutes prior to the game being ended, and that can cost you the game. That's right. It can, it can increase or decrease your, your deficit within the, in the lead that you hold. I mean, I've seen free throws plenty of time become daggers, and I've seen free throws plenty of time become the reason that a team loses, you know? Exactly. So you, you got you to pay attention. It's Eric Myers inbounding it for Von Steuben. All right, moving around that baseline, trying to get an open man. The man-to-man -man press is definitely taking effect on Von Steuben. And there it goes, another Still. turnover. Wonder what we got in store this time. Sean Allen with a two. Count it. It's Vince Carter. In distress. And that's another timeout forced. Sean Allen with the silky smooth move to the basket. Three minutes on the clock. Von Steuben takes yet another timeout. Just, you know, it gets to them. And, and Coach Carter is trying to slow down the momentum, cut off these guys' circulation. And it's not making a difference. <laughs> it's, it's sad to say. But we definitely have a timeout. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick commercial break. You're watching Hoops Time. Check it out. What you doing? Girl, bring your ass here. Stop. What you doing? Mama. Shut up. So you got pregnant with another nephew? No. Let me tell you what happened. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you. Let me tell you what happened. Get out of my house. I wonder what happens now. I should have told somebody. What's up? This is Ben Gordon. You're watching Hoops High. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Here in the second quarter. It's coming to an end right now. Three minutes exactly on the clock. Von Steuben has possession of the ball. Trying to switch up the game. Momentum, and there's another tip. Man, high park. <laughs> 
they're like vultures, not even vultures. <laughs> we can't say vultures, like more like wolves. Just just hungry, famished wolves, and they're after anything that they feel that they can eat or they can devour, you know. Because vultures get something that's already dead, and I don't think Von Steuben is dead yet. I think they really have it, and they, and they still got the chance to turn it around. But, I mean, you can't do anything when it when a team is just this hungry. That's how Park is tonight. With the pass to the corner. Shot is up. Another shot contested. No good. Rebound. This fight down low. Battle for the rebound. It's Von Steuben settles for the deep jumpers. I mean, when you're down, you want to attack the basket. Yeah, it's exactly. It's on the opposite. I mean, and it's exactly. It's not like that, that High Park really has some great defenders underneath the basket because Von Steuben has had these second chance points where was, was was they have completed multiple times on second chance points. So I don't understand why they don't want to attack the basket more, draw a couple of fouls, get some guys in foul trouble, and just, you know, and, and use that as their advantage. Then open up for the three pointers. Exactly. Ball goes, gets deflected, standing the same way. Ball being now taken out by number 21 from Hab Park, Gregory Brown. Number 20. Almost loses it, regains it. Inside. Pass gets deflected. Teardrop, short. Rebound by number 33 for Von Steuben, Jamal Dancer. Tyler, jump ball. This ball goes the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, front door, Hoops High is produced by, Hoops High is produced by students learning to be professional broadcast. All the camera work, announcing, directing, and everything else is done by young students. That's right. What you see is what you get. I see camera girls, Elizabeth, <laughs> and, uh, you know. Out there doing her thing. It's a lot. There's a lot of guys up here um, on top of the scene. There she go. Behind the scene is Aisha, and there you go, Jonita, Big Boss. You know, everybody still doing and contributing, and that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Teamwork here, Hoops High. We love you guys. Without you guys watching us, we wouldn't have anybody to support us, and we wouldn't have anything to work for. I mean, we appreciate. It. Anything you want to say, Ralph? It was just two announcements, two great announcements on the show. Oh, man. I, I miss those guys. I bet they were very, man. very handsome. And they always do what they <laughs> <laughs> they always do what they should be doing. Yes. Especially a guy on the right with that brown blaze on, if he was on there. That guy on the left with the white, man. Oh, man. Did you see him? Man. Her, he's fresh, man. <laughs> Heard the kids want to be like them when they grow up. <laughs> Second shot is good. Yeah. They batted by Hyde Park right now. Ball bring, being brought down by number 14, Sean Allen. Which is, is very good to see. One thing I love is these bench players coming off and being just as in, into the game and, and aware of the game and the speed of the game as the people that started. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's like coming in with another whole starting team, a starting five. So High Park got a lot of a, a lot of assets on their team. I mean, these guys really got a team to work with this year. So Devon, oh, a lot of liabilities. I don't I don't want to say liabilities per se, but um. I don't know. The, the offensive <laughs> and defensive awareness, I mean, even the starters, even the starters, it's just not at the level of, of the of high parks. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, we're not going to say that they're, that they're bad or it's not there, but it's just not at the same level as high park right now. And, you know, high park might just hit their Wheaties today, but, I mean, it just goes to show you can't you can't have a day, uh, a bad game, not one day, because every day counts and every game is just as good as any other. Ball is inbounded. Pressure's now being applied to high park. Full court man to man defense. It's number one bringing the ball down. It's Tyshawn, Treshawn Jones. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hoops High is produced by high school students learning to be professional broadcasts. All of the camera work, announcing, directing, and everything else is done by young students. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ball now being inbounded by Von Steuben. A lot of possession switches has been going on throughout this game. It's one thing I've been noticing. Like both teams just have, you know, not I won't say a remarkable amount, but they have had a nice amount of turnovers in this game. Yes, I agree. That's Vega. Stride to the basket. Man, just couldn't finish. That's the penetration we was looking for. You no, know, his chance was there. He just couldn't compete. And um, there's a foul on the play. Trayshawn Jones goes to the line. Freshman. Freshman on a varsity team. Nothing like it, huh? Yeah, and he's getting ticked in a, in a quarterfinal game. Yes, I mean, he's the only freshman on the team. 
Yeah, that's definitely a guy to watch, ladies and gentlemen. Future stars of Chicago. She misses the first free throw. Hyde Park, 30. Von Steuben, 18. 35 seconds left in the second quarter. Here at the USC Pavilion. Misses oh, both of them. very close encounter with the ball. Um, number 33 here for Von Steuben on that one. That was Jamal Dantzler. He just got really close. Looked like goaltender almost. As the trap is applied in the corner on the left side. And a wide open trade ball is put up, but no good. That was number 15, Jerome, Jerome Moore. The ball is stolen by Fabian. Taking this man one-on-one. -on -one. Oh. Seeing a little, a little disadvantage as far as speed goes. Smart, smart play by Fabian, just loses the ball. They got the line. At the line, the senior number three, Vega. Two. 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 Shots. Crowd getting into it. There it goes. Trying to pump Vega. Exactly. Got the chili this here. Von Steuben. Crowd is right behind us. Right across from them is High Park fans. Everybody seems like they're into the game. It's nice, you know. It's a good, it's a good feeling right now. As we have seven seconds, seven point five seconds on the clock. Oh, we have a foul on the play by Von Steuben so early in the game. Didn't expect last. Didn't expect those kind of fouls right now. And the bonus. That's indeed. Fouls on number thirteen. Eric Myers. And Sharif is at the line. Southmore. 32 gets it for Von Steuben. Long, Vega. Long, man, Vega really gets down the court. As the tip is up, it is no good. Second chance points didn't just come through for Von Steuben, sad to say. It's been a wonderful game so far, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Right now, we have, once again, it's halftime. We have Hyde Park leading 30 to 19 as we get ready to go into the second half. What do you think so far about the game, bro? Well, I think High Park came in this game with the, entire, with the you know, uh, uh, direction to win it. And as you 30 to 19 speaks for itself, Von it, Steuben it, is, is not playing as well exactly. as, as they want it, to. You know, Vince, head coach Vince Carter, when I spoke to him earlier, he was very, you know, enthusiastic. He's very, you know, um, willing and, mm -hmm. and determined to win this game. That's you. right. Hi, my name is Jimmy Love. I'm here with Coach Kersey, head coach of the High Park Academy. So y'all had a great victory over Marshall. You know, uh, y'all came out, y'all show, y'all showed yourself. Do you think that that was uh, did that pump y'all pump your guys up for this game today? Well, you know what, it was a good that win against Marshall was a good win for our program, and um, against a good program that Marshall is, and they're state winners and they've been proven champions. But that game is over. Today is a big game against Von Steuben. That's the next game that we have to play and today. We came out and we were very motivated and everything. Got to calm the guys down. And we're giving away too many second rebounds, too many second shots, and they want the ball. We're losing too many loose balls. All right. So what you gonna tell your boys in the uh, locker room so y'all can bring home a win today? Got to make free throws, have better patience, and no second shots and rebounds. All right. Thank you, man. Go and get back that to your team. So we're gonna toss it over to some student uh, produced PSAs. Sex. Safe sex is the best sex because while having sexual intercourse, you don't have to worry about the possibles like pregnancy and STD. If you feel that y'all ready for sex, please wrap it up. There are a variety of birth control methods and condoms. Use them. What up, y'all? This is Common, and you're watching Hoops Hot. Are you interested in topics that matter to our generation? Well, you can tune in to Perspectives of Teens in Chicago on Can TV, where you can watch teens like you share the latest news. By logging on to the Perspectives of Teens in Chicago's Block Spot, you can witness what goes on behind the scenes. On the Block Spot, you can watch our videos, send feedback, look at our pictures, and much more. Get connected to news that matters to you. Log on to ptcchicago.blockspot.com. Check it out.
Hi, I'm here with Von Steuben head coach, Mr. Vince Carter. Vince Carter, you had a recent you had a recent upset when you guys uh, beat uh, Lincoln Park. So how, do you feel optimistic that your boys can pull it off again? Well, you know, we were behind a little bit the whole time in the Lincoln Park game, and we did well. I think we're playing well. You know, I have a very young team. They look a little nervous once they get open. Mm -hmm. We need to hit some open shots, but I think we got the will to come back and win this one too. Now, we just uh, we just came out of halftime. What did you tell your boys in the locker room to get them ready? Uh, just be more aggressive and play hard and go to the basket and finish. All right, so I'm going to let you get back over to your thing. I, I appreciate it. So we're going to toss it back over to the announcers. Getting it started right now. Number three has the ball. Vega. <laughs> Vega. Von Steuben goes to the hole. Overshoots it dramatically. He just good pass by Griffin to yeah. Jackson. And Jackson, Jackson can't finish. Man. It's not looking good so far. I mean Hyde Park definitely coming out. Not looking not looking like they just have looked. A couple seconds ago. You don't expect that pass from a forward by Griffin. You know, he's you a don't. senior making Great passes and shoot. That's if he was a point guard or something. Back again. Hyde Park getting that second chance. Redeeming themselves. Right now, there go Griffin going to the basket, man. Very strong. Couldn't complete the shot. Ball is being now brought down court. Oh, falls on the floor. Number 22, Justin Parnell. One of the guys who he was told to look for. As Griffin gets the ball, slings it down the court. Fast break. The reverse layup is good by number three, Fabian Harris. Very, very, very off the fly move. I mean, that's what a guard is definitely there for. The fast decision making shows. It's in his blood, ladies and gentlemen. The ball is now being brought down court again by Von Steuben. And the Hyde Park Thunderbirds puts the pressure on them, giving a 10 second count. Something rarely seen in high school basketball, ladies and gentlemen. Like, 10 second counts is, is definitely a. A, a, a proof of, of great defense and, and how pressure really uh, really applies to a team and breaks the pipes. I mean, 32 to 19. Sorry to cut you off. 32 I'm sorry. It's no, 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 definitely. I was waiting for you to say something. I know you've just been here stuck. So. Stuck. <laughs> exactly. So it's a good game, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching, you're probably not even listening to what we're saying. Ball is then taken in by Griffin. Griffin with the pull-up 15-footer. No good. <laughs> they probably got TV on mute. <laughs> 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 oh, these guys ain't talking about anything. Griffin with the slingshot again. Back down. Lose the ball. Harris once again trying to take uh, Bailey one on one. Griffin now becoming a quarterback for high. He, he definitely is coming up, becoming a quarterback. Oh, like a pitcher or something. Oh, thrown away. Saved by Bailey. Oh, excuse me, not Bailey, ladies and gentlemen. Saved by. Number three, that was Vega with the save. The ball is thrown away down court. Close to the basket. 15, 35, Dixon. Couldn't complete. One thing I've just been noticing is that um that the that the pressure that High Parks is, is applying is making up for the for the offensive, you know, faults that they that they gain. So as you you can see right here, the, the defense is phenomenal as far as um High Park goes. And Bailey and and Harris, well, yeah, Bailey and Harris, I think is two formidable opponents. Like two guys that I, I like, I would like to see match up against each other every game. Exactly. Great here matchup we go right here. Yeah, definitely a great matchup right here. Pick goes around and penetrates. Whoa! Pass. Easy pass, easy bucket laid down by Floyd Campbell. Wonderful to see those two teammates connect. Harris at the top. Floyd General. Dixon with the ball. And the pass and the shot was just simple. By Griffin. I mean, they got Griffin, man. Griffin definitely putting up points in this game today, ladies and gentlemen. Points, pass, There's another steal. steal. And Dixon couldn't complete the layup, but I believe he got a foul. Ladies and gentlemen, the PSA's dramas, documentaries that you see between breaks on hoops are produced by Free Spirit Media students at NLCP. We hope that you enjoy the stories and messages that we young people are sharing. As this timeout was just called by Vaughn Steuben again in the second quarter, right? I mean, the second half right now, 527 on the clock. You know, it's, it's pretty early to, to call the timeout. But um, I, I believe the coach is doing what he believes his team would need to make it better or make the pain less worse, you know, <laughs> and, um, and, and try to make the game more of a game for the people. 
who are here watching, you know, and show the true colors of his team. I think he have a, a wonderful, well-rounded, and, and very talented group of young men over there, uh, Von Steuben. But for some reason, it's like something is stopping them from, you know, really showing it tonight. Exactly. As he mentioned in the interview, that his players are young, you know, they're learning. But, you know, it's the same way for Hyde Park. Their players are young, and they're still learning. That's right. Both, both teams, high school, public school so exactly it's not really an age difference so we can't really use that as an excuse but not saying that he did mm -hmm. but it's just certain things that each player does, doesn't have exactly going back to the game Dixon is at the line shooting his first free throw see if it's good it's no good oh good Dixon being being such an athlete and, a, and such an executor as we have, seen, we have seen in the first quarter, you would really be surprised that he missed free throws. Ladies and gentlemen, please check out the new Free Spirit Media website at www.freespiritmedia.org. Feedback is very important to us. www.freespiritmedia.org. Shot is up and retrieved by number 33 Floyd, I mean 32 Floyd Campbell. Being in the hands of number 34, Jermaine Hadler, Hiller. Bailey at the top, guarded by Harris. Once again. Kick to Hiller. Hiller drives strong to the basket, takes the hit. And I believe he receives the foul. Now that's what you expect Von Steuben to come out doing. Attacking the basket, going to the free throw line, knocking the easy two down. Exactly, that was what we first expected them to do, you know. Seeing that the, the small guys, small cocky guys, they have fast and quick to the basket and can take hits. You will expect them to come out. As, as drivers and slashers, more so than you know perimeter perimeter attackers and, and three point shooters. But this is the game that we look for Von Steuben to play, more 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 so than what was going on earlier in the first in the first game with all the perimeter shots and the bad field goal percentage that they had. Both shots are good by Heller. Ball now possession of number five Jackson. Showed his skills early in the first quarter. Penetrate more. Yeah, Counting. <laughs> more a very, very smooth mover. As you can see, I mean, transitions right into his spin move and completes, no hesitation. Drive. Looked a little confused when he, when he caught in the air and seen him defending next to him. It was Jackson again, Martell Jackson. Pass gets deflected. Oh, over the back, takes a hit. Guess it was a loose ball. As he has a wonderful shot laid in by Dassler. One of the guys that coach told us to check out, you know. And Vince Carter definitely know how to pick his guys out. Leads now 11, 36 to 25. Ron right. Stupin trying to cut it in. Exactly. As the layup is good by Jackson. Quick quick pass with the drop, um, with the drop by Jackson. Way to finish. And the speed of this game is not slowing down. Puts it back, no good. No good. Two second, two shots. As Dancers reach for the leg of number three, Harris, he'd be called for the foul. Couple subs coming in for Vaughn Stuber. Some fresh legs out there. It's here at the USC Pavilion. That's right. Harris brings it up. Good defense by number 23, Bailey. Oh, more with the looking for Ali pass. Couldn't complete it. Couldn't complete it at all. Showing that that same page mentality of, of the team, but just not feeling feeling the same intensity. We now have possession of Von Steuben and bounding the ball. Pressure have never ceased from the beginning of the game to where, where we are right now. Um, Hyde Park is still applying the, the full court man-to-man -man pressure on Von Steuben as Bailey is now still going up against. Well, now he switched it off. No longer is, is no longer Bailey and um, Harris. It's Bailey and Jackson now. Ooh. Bailey gets stuck in the air. It passes off for some reason. That was called. I'm Jerome Moore. Number 15, Jerome Moore. That's his third. The team's third. So Jerome, Jerome Moore goes to the line. Try to close his deficit. 
25 to 38, 13 points is the, what, what it's looking like. Fails to complete that layup. I mean, completes that free throw. Excuse me. Floyd Campbell missed the first one. Junior plays uh, two guards, forward and senior, uh, forward and a center position. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to have a guy like that on your team. Magic Johnson kind of style of play. You know, switch up and plays the big guy if he has the chance to. Multiple skill sets. High Park has no players that can do that. Exactly. But, I mean, the, the thing is with that, High Park players that, that every position the High Park players have, they play their position so well that, you know, they don't really need anybody to play two or three positions. Like being a jack of all trades or being a master exactly. of, of two or three things, you know, as we had learned already. I would, free spirit. I would say in basketball, I want to be a jack of all trades. Yeah, I want to be the jack of all trades also. I must say, more playing time, more opportunities. Exactly. I definitely agree with you on that, Ron. Maybe somewhere else you'll want to be like a master, just one thing, but yeah, I agree. Count it. With the layup, back to back points. Jerome, Jerome Moore with one. It's High Park just kind of taking off. 42 to 27. Not looking right. so good for Von Stewart. It is not looking good at all. As a, we have a steal and a fast break. Layup is good by Martell Jackson. Didn't even get the ball across the half quarter, looks like. It's due to that Steuben. great defense that High Park is playing. That's right. Von Steuben with the crossover. Bringing the ball down, taking it to the man's in the middle. The left side wing, Dantzler with the layup. It's Harris brings it up. Guarded by Bailey. Also a great matchup. Haven't seen much of uh, Mark Malcolm Griffin in this yeah. Second quarter. Yeah, Malcolm Third Griffin quarter. was definitely a force in the first two quarters early in the game. Don't know what happened um, to him here, but I mean, he he's doing something because the team is working well. So, the shot is up and is contested well. Retrieved still by number 13, and he finishes Eric Myers with the finish and the make up for the for the missed basket on that one. I was called. High Park takes one finally. I guess it's time for he wants his players to get a little breather or something because they're doing a very good job as far as points go. 44 to 31. <laughs> and I'll be happy right now. I'll be congratulating my guys, let them sit down, get some Gatorade, and say, get ready for this to finish out the quarter, you know, on a strong note. In this year alone in Chicago, we've had 34 Chicago public school students gunned down and killed in this year alone and for the most part there has been silence we know what to do it's already been mentioned we've got to enforce the gun laws that are on the books we've got to make sure that unscrupulous gun dealers aren't loading up vans and dumping guns in our communities because we know they're not made in our communities what's up this is larry hughes you're watching hoops high Malcolm Griffin then battling it to Hyde Park. See some crowd shots. That's right. Get it going again. Jackson coming down quick. With a new defender on him this time. That was number 11. For Ron Stubin when defending Jackson. Tim Ward. New guy. Fresh off the bench. Harris now being guarded by Vega. That's right. Vega Harris is also a great matchup. Wonderful matchups. I see both these coaches having, them. or if even if if it's just the players picking them themselves, they they know how to match up with each other, and knows what a, a good matchup is. Because we have Griffin, the jab step, drive to the basket, kicks it out, wide open. We have another pass back to Griffin. Griffin pushing the ball hard, get a pick off, layup is good. With the pick and roll by Jerome Moore from Malcolm Griffin. Pick and roll executed very smoothly. Back to the playing to the playbooks with that one. Oh, a steal. We have a fast break with Griffin. Oh, shot is up. Griffin can complete it. Hi, I'm here with Anthony Hall, a fan for Von Stuber. So, Mr. Hall, what brings you out to the game today? Well, my son is playing this competitive game this afternoon, so I came to see him play. Just last week, he was featured in Chicago Sun-Times when he brought his team from a comeback to a victory last week. A victory. So, and it looks like uh, we uh, they down by, uh, what's that, 15 points? Down by 15. About 15. 
about 15 points. Do you uh, feel today that he can uh, bring the team up, get a comeback, and bring home a win today? I think he can do it again today, just as he did the last week, if he can just pull his team together and rally them together. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let you uh, finish uh, watching the game. I appreciate it. And we're going to toss it back over to the announcers. Thanks, Jimmy Love, for that wonderful interview. We really appreciate it. As you see, the fans are definitely here to support us, the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, the brothers. And they have what I call hope, <laughs> which is not a bad thing to have right now. 15-point lead. Let's get into the game. Griffin inbounding it. Oh! oh. What, what, what's the, I don't what know. What pass is that? I don't know if it was a pass. Shot is good. You can count it. Vega coming out with his guns blazing. Vega's now matching up against number three from Floyd, I mean from uh, High Park, Fabian Harris. Harris gives it off to Moore. Moore with the lob pass to Dixon. Dixon couldn't get up. And it's out of bounds. Would have been a great completion. Definitely. More than great. I probably would have been yelling right now. Get started. Now had a ball in possession of Von Steuben. Coming down. Tim Ward. Oh, oh man, Hylers. He ran into his own player. Foul was called before that. Yeah, I didn't see the foul. But I mean the ref definitely seen something. Jermaine Hyler at the line. Shoot two. That's right. And you can count that first one. As it's now 13 point, 13 point lead, I believe. Oh, excuse me, 12 point. That made it a 12 point right there. And you can now make it 11. Griffin gets it. Griffin bringing it down pretty big, like a power four. Didn't stop him from bringing it down. Oh. Pass given off. The foul is good, but the shot is not. As you go into the line to shoot two points. Ladies and gentlemen, we are watching Hoops High. We are here at the UIC Pavilion where uh, High Park and Von Steuben is playing. The score is 46 to 35. That's right. You know, watch this when you see it. This happens when you see it. That's right. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> shot is up and it's no good. By number 15, Jerome Moore. Guard, 6'5 guard. Just let you guys know. Don't see that too often in high school. I mean, that's pretty big for high school. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, maybe not NBA. Exactly. But high school, man. College is more of a forward, you know, small forward kind of uh, position. But, man, that's, that's crazy. Wow. Vega with the stop and pop. Couldn't complete it. But it was a wonderful move. I mean, and... From from the prior shot he just he just made, I really expect him to hit though. <laughs> see Vince Carter is a little furious about that shot. That shot was good. It was good. But number fifteen, Jerome Moore. <laughs> number eleven bring it down the court. Ward. Nice bounce pass to Ward. From Ward, I mean. Good and it's good. Right to Floyd Campbell. They can keep that up and, and play some great defense. We're, we will have a one to two point game. Exactly, yeah, yeah, definitely. Seems like the decision making is definitely coming to Von Steuben and they're slowing the ball down more. And along with them slowing the ball down more, making great decisions as Griffin goes to the floor sliding. And then the ball is turned over. And one of the advantages I see for High Park is that High Park has great guards, you know. Mostly, their key players is three guards. Right, so I, right. I would say their guards for High Park are already doing their job, and Von Stupin just has to capitalize on the things that High Park is not completing, and these second chance points that they're getting and these rebounds have to stop as soon as possible. That's right. Von Stupin expects to win this game with five minutes and 54 seconds left. Have to do something quick. Exactly. I mean, you couldn't have said it any better, and it shows that how attentive you are to the, to the game and the small things that's going on. But definitely, like all the small things that Von Steuben is, has, has been doing in the past, they, they have to just eliminate those and, and try to make up for them right now. There's only five minutes left in this quarter, and, and it comes down to the wire. Exactly. Fakes a shot. Dropped in. 
quick pass. He's a little bit under the basket, and that's a travel yes. call as he switches his pivot. Wonderful call by the ref. Wonderful call. Floyd Campbell with the travel. Ball's going the other way, ladies and gentlemen. Dixon inbounds. He gives it off to Jackson. Jackson been keeping this game nice and steady since it began. Guarded by Tim Ward. Beats him. Kicked out. Wide open. We have Griffin. Oh, excuse me. That's not Griffin, ladies and gentlemen. We had a wide open Jer Jerome Moore. Jerome Moore, um, Malcolm Griffin, and definitely you can't you can't forget Anthony Dixon. All have completed those three point field goal attempts, and these guys are are the average of like six three, like guys you usually wouldn't expect to hit those shots. We got six four, six three, and six five shooting three pointers and completing them with a wonderful percentage. I mean, that's something to really rely on, and more of a secret weapon to pull out the end of the game like like it is right now. Swings it off. Just misses the ball. Wow, the reverse layup is not good. <laughs> it's not good, excuse me. It's no good by Justin Parnell. A wonderful attempt, though. It really showed his skills and his quick thinking. And he goes to the line. At the line, shooting two. As you had a, the fans screaming, ow, like it's like a lot of cats or something around here, man. So, I don't know about that, but it worked, I guess. All right, he missed. missed it. Exactly. And once again, it continues. I mean, if they feel that it's going to result in, in a missed field goal, they'll, they'll do it. Anything on the best side. Uh huh. Yeah, it's good on that one. Parnell com completes. We got five minutes and eight seconds on the clock. Oh, steal. Another steal by Von Steuben. Really turning it up. Back to the basket. Von Steuben gets to the line again. Back to back. I mean, these guys are really making these smart decisions this game. Defensively, playing, playing the passing lanes in more intense. And less turnovers on the offensive time. I mean, on also offensive possessions. I mean, Von Steuben has really wised up and, and came out this last quarter, surprisingly, and made some great decisions. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we come out with another Lincoln Park ending and, and they come out the winners. I personally don't see that. Shot is good. Because 51 or 38. 39. Well, uh, <laughs> you, you can even make a 40. I mean, it's going to be 40. I mean, that's that's only 11 points with five minutes. High Park defense is too great to let Von Steuben come back and score easy buckets. True. But if they do what they just what they they do what they just have done, as we just seen back to back twice, it's a possibility right. that those eleven points will come as, as fast as as running up and down the court in five seconds. Anything is possible. It is. I mean, we've seen it. Me and you together yeah. have seen comebacks. So I mean, I can only I can only imagine just having another one here at the quarterfinals. Shot is passed off to the corner. Brought back up by Harris. Harris is really being guarded. Shot is up and it's good. He completes with his defender all over him. Good defense by Hyde Park. Yes, Dantzler going to the basket. Oh. Trying to go to the dunk. Couldn't complete. Um, not 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 as not explosive. I feel it's a little bit soft soft as a jump. I didn't think he was going to complete. That was, that was the first attempt dunk we saw all game for Von Stuber. Well, yeah, I was about to say for Von, I mean, but you see his explosiveness off the jump. It's like his goal in mind wasn't to finish. It was to draw the foul, you know, more exactly. than to finish. So that's what it seemed like. Ladies and gentlemen, we know we are not always perfect, but we are working hard and we are always learning. We thank you for your support and encouragement. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And babies and children and everyone that watched the show, we love you guys. And without you guys watching us, it would be no us. Goes off for the second one. Shot is up. Oh, good. Retrieved, though. Saved by number 12, Nolan Williams. Wow. Fast pace. It was a block. <laughs> but it didn't look like a block. It, it looked more like a foul to me, but it was a block. 53 to 41. Three minutes and 58 seconds. Can Von Steuben do it? They did it before. They did it before. 
Why not on the on the on the bigger stage? On top of that, they got more to even want it for, so everybody can see him and be witness. Shot is good by Sharif. That's right. Sharif been putting up a lot of points also. You yes. know, he's been a guy behind behind the scenes, but he's definitely contributing. And one of his main places of, of contribution has been at the free throw line. If we notice, every time he gets to the line, he's been he's been knocking them down. He goes again for the next shot, and it's good. As I, Extending. as I mentioned earlier, you know, he's he is one of the key players for uh, High Park Thunderbirds. That's right. That's right. I mean, those small things will make someone, you know, a key, a key player. Shot is up. No good. We got a fast break. Uh-oh, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's showtime. Oh! Oh, that's even worse. I expect it. I don't want to say what I expected because I'm, I'm so highly disappointed. But I expected a jam fest. 360, a windmill, Stop. two hands. Layup. <laughs> I would have took the layup. I couldn't even get the layup out of him. It's all right, though. It's all right, ladies and gentlemen. I think he's going to make up for it. I think he feel bad about it, letting us down like that. Man, Hyler with a wonderful hang glide, and he finished it. Look at that wonderful move with the left hand, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, you're watching Hoops High. High Park, Juan Steuben playing the score is 55 to 43. We are here at the UIC Pavilion. Bring back to the game, Jackson. Foul was called by number 13. So it looks it looks like um, Von Steuben will start giving out the fouls and trying to get the ball back, yeah. stop the clock, those kind of things, which which does nothing ultimately in these kind of games, but make it longer. Because most of the times teams don't really come back. I mean, the deficit is, I, I believe, is a little too large. I'm contradicting myself. Yes, I am. Because I said they will come back. But the deficit is too large for, for them to try to commence in that kind of play. And, and I think they'll be doing nothing but just making the game more longer than what it should be. As Malcolm Griffin get ready to inbound the ball. I knew the right marker, a snap back. Shut place. up. <laughs> come back and say what's really going to happen. I mean, I just, I just, I felt the sense of hope when the guy's father came up and said that powerful, that he told that powerful story to Jimmy. I just felt like, man, it might just happen. I had to close my eyes and just, it might just happen. But I'm sorry. I, I woke up. I realized, you, you know, I was asleep. Yeah, I was asleep. Shout out to Dr. Fluka at Morehouse. I was asleep, Dr. Fluka. I'm awake now. I know, I know reality really is. As he's just playing with him now. Sean Allen. Uh-oh. High Park just trying to kill some time. And look at Von Steuben all over him. As the foul is drawing. 2.45 on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. 55 to 43. 12-point lead. We get a, get a um, substitute coming in. And then a bonus. So it's a one-on-one -on -one now. Which is ultimately what they want. Because now they get the shot. And if they miss the shot, they get to play on. Uh, 14, Sean Allen. Senior guard, 5'11". It's been a, a great game if you're for Heist Park, but hasn't been a good game if you're rooting for uh, Von Stuber. Yeah, haven't been quite quite the game that was hoped for for Von Stuber. Not in this quarterfinals. You expect quarterfinals games to be 56 to 54, 56 to 55. Uh -huh. You don't expect a quarterfinal game to be 56 to 43, but you know Von Stuber just came out. I mean, wait, wait. Can we go back a couple? A couple. Let's go back a year. You remember the North Lawndale Marshall game? <laughs> uh, North Lawndale lost tremendously. Like, it wasn't even a game. Yeah. <laughs> and it was it was sad to watch. But I mean, yeah, I, I do agree with you. You don't you don't want those kind of games in these kind of in these kind of quarterfinal finals because these are supposed to be you know the best or the cream of the crop that we're watching. And, and and two formidable teams that you know we we wouldn't expect that, but I definitely agree with you on, on that one. But I mean, it happens, sadly. We got two thirty nine on the clock. You said the cream with a crock. 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 P. Come on, man. Hey, hey. It's Mark. It's Mark, man. It's Mark talking, man. King Lee said, "I cream cream with a crock." I, I, with I a don't know what to say. Cream with a crop, ladies and gentlemen. You trying to you trying to clown me? <laughs> <laughs> trying to clown me because I got on my I got on my blazer. It's all good though, man. Bailey coming down. Pushing it. Guarded yeah. by Jackson. And literally pushing it, like keeping his defender off of him, pushing it. Killing time. I mean you expect them to You expect them to try to get a fast a quick exactly. shot off in an attempt, definitely. 
Definitely. I agree with you, with you on that. 13. Um, Eric Myers, who had the ball in his possession. I think I seen some lane open. Yet he played around at the perimeter a couple of times. Hyler, the shot, no good. I don't think that was the shot that he was looking for. Uh, as we just tell. said, as we just said, you know, trying to not trying to kill so much time. And exactly with these possessions, but you don't want to force up a, a not so good shot either. That's right. As we have Harris putting <laughs> putting the, putting Bailey in the mixer right now. Ball is being pushed. Once again, number 13, Eric Myers. Swing to Bailey. Oh, Harris almost gets a steal. Yeah. He was on his back. Definitely on his back. 139 on the clock. 58-43. This high park just want to sell into a victory. Exactly. And I think the, the deficit is, is what uh, Von Stupin is more focused on. As the ball is stolen away again. 132 uh, on the clock. I guess they no Von Steuben. I mean Hyde Park is definitely gonna make the most out of this one. We have a timeout. 128 on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. We want to talk to a quick commercial break. You're watching Hoop Time. PSA time. Education is a social process. Education is growth. Education is a preparation for life. Education is life itself. Hi, this is Scotty Pippen, and you're watching Hoops High. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Mark Kill alongside Rafael Morales. I said his name, and I always do for some reason every game at the UIC Pavilion. You want to let them know who we got playing, what we got going on, Ralph? We got Howard Park and Ron Stupin here at the UIC Pavilion quarterfinals. That's right. Quarterfinals coming down to the last couple of games. Jackson penetrate. Oh, just oh, gave they lead. let him come in. Like, open the door to your house and let him get the VCR. It's over. Martell Jackson. That's amazing. I never expected Hyde Park. Once again, I never expected Hyde Park. And once again, I never expected <laughs> Hyde Park to come out the way they did tonight. The tip is good. Floyd Campbell. And there's another timeout. One minute exactly on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. And um, the score is 60 to 45. 15 points once again. But Hyde Park is definitely, man, just changed my whole look, outlook on, on the way that Chicago public school basketball is is a scene. Is there a time out with that said we're gonna talk to a quick commercial break and watch the hoops out. I slept with five girls. I slept with five boys. See them through the same eyes. Fourth quarter, one minute left in this quarterfinal game here at the UIC Pavilion. And it's coming to the end, ladies. Sad to say. I mean, gentlemen, too. But it's coming to the end, ladies and gentlemen. And it's not looking good for Vaughn Steuben. Griffin and bounds the ball. Got number one, Trashawn Jones, the freshman on the team. Get some tick. And he got possession of the ball in the fourth quarter of a quarterfinal game. I mean, that shows a lot. 60 to 45. <laughs> but, I mean, it's the fourth quarter. <laughs> I guess. I mean, he trusts him. <laughs> yeah, he was in the game earlier. So. Yeah, he was. And he put up a couple of joint. I mean, a couple of points. So, it's good to see it. We shouldn't, we shouldn't talk uh, negative about, you know, I mean, the yeah. The only freshman on the team. You I mean, know yeah. that is. The kid definitely gets he gets points in my book. Oh, Spin oh, move. no good. Yeah, shot. One man team. Save by Trey Sean. Count it. Gave it right away. And this is another timeout. Another timeout. 
Devon Vega shooting the lights out of the gym. 24.2 seconds left in this fourth quarter, 60 to 48. That's right. Vega has definitely been, you know, one of the guys that was in and out. He made a couple of points here, made a couple of the points there, but in the end, just not enough. We had 24.2 seconds on the clock. And, um, I believe on um, High Park has possession of the ball. Notice High Park has been coming out every time out, almost with possession of the ball. As we get ready to finish out this game. So I'll let you know, Ralph, it's been a pleasure to be beside you on this game, my friend. Same to you. And all the other games that we have done. We got a, we got a, man, we got a rap sheet. They don't know, though. They don't know. We, we kill this. We do this. <laughs> As number four, new face comes in for um, Hyde Park, Rodney Scott. Sophomore. Sophomore, 6'2". Guard. Whoa. And he finishes. 25 a new face comes in to get his two points in. And he's not even on the roster. <laughs> Shot is up by 13. No good. That's the end of everything, ladies and gentlemen. Hyde Park turned out 62 to 48. That's the end of the game. One thing you have to say, hustle killed it. Exactly. The main hustle of Hyde Park, man, they came out. They they played at the beginning the same way they played at the end. They never gave up not one, well, not one bit of this game. And in the end, <laughs> they came out victorious. Exactly. 62 to 48 final score at Hyde Park's way. Going to toss over to Jimmy. See what Jimmy got for us. All right. I'm here with Jerome Moore, the player of the game. You're number 15, and you scored 15 points, man. So how I feel to win the first uh, round of the uh, semi- no, it feel good, man. I feel good to be in the playoffs in my last year. I want to just stick it out, win it all, man. Just take it to my team. My coach been telling me I have to play big every game. So I just been taking it to him. All right, that's what's up. You got any shout outs or anything? Who you play the game for? A shout out to my mama, my father, my sisters. Man, we getting it, man. Let's go. Let's go. All right, man, go and get back there, man. Celebrate that win. So remember, you can catch Hoopside every Saturday right here on Channel 19 at 8 o'clock. You already know. So, uh, peace. <laughs> you can watch Hoops High on Can TV Channel 19 every Saturday at 8 p.m. Please visit www.hoopshigh.org to learn more. Hoops High and Free Spirit Media would like to thank our sponsors, Aero Capital Management and Aerial Mutual Funds and the Craft Employee Fund. We are grateful for their support, in making our mission of youth media education and opportunity possible. They probably never was exposed to it. They probably would have never have done it. But it's something that you see that interests people a lot. I never worked with a camera. You know, it was my first time learning about a camera. You know, zooming in, zooming out. It was real good experience for me. You know, I think it changed a lot in me too. It changed my how I think, and it changed like some I like to do in life. When I get older, I want to be some type of actor. So being in this classroom really helped me out. Really exercised my ability to act. We shooting it, and we shooting it off like. 
what we done been through and like people get to see it and they watching it and they liking it. Like young kids in the community can do stuff that's like worth some type of value. Want to be my girlfriend? Sorry, but I want to marry Michael Jackson. Deep, deep emotion, deep feelings, and you just devoted to that person. My definition of love is when you devote yourself to one person, like one person not just physically but emotionally a special bond that you have with a certain person father male and female that you share you you know you will go all out for a person when you'll do anything for somebody you know you'll go you know you'll jump over a bridge to save somebody like i think that love is different with each person like the way that i love each different person is, who's a unique individual. I love each unique individual differently. Was made for me and you. Yeah, I've been love a couple of times. Yes, I have experienced love. How long ago? It was some months ago. I have experienced love, and if you're talking about specific relationships, I'd say the last time I was in love was about a year to two years ago. I've experienced plenty of love all the time. I love my mom, I love my sister, I love my grandma, I love my uncle, I love my aunt, I love my other uncle, and then I love Alex, but I call him Ali Poo Poo. Yeah, I've experienced love. Have I ever been in love? I mean, being in love is a different story. I think that I have been in lust. Sexual tension between both of y'all. You just get the urge or whatever. You get real amped about that person. Sexual attraction. And love, love is more than that. Love is caring about someone, even if that person was never capable of having sex with you, ever. You still stick around and care about that person. I think it's possible to love someone and not be in love with them, because if that's the case, then, I mean, everybody you love, you'll be in love with. You love everybody now. If that's your family, won't you think you love them? So, but right, but you ain't got to be in love, in love with them. That's you your know? family. Give me some. It's possible to love someone without being in love with them. Because you can love them. You can care for them. Like, I got love for that person, but I'm not in love with you. I don't want to be with you, but just because we had something, then I still care about you. Uh, not a simple thing. It takes time. It's not easy to just say I love you and to fall in love with somebody. I don't think it's easy to fall in love with someone, but it probably depends on the person. Well, for me, it's hard because I've never experienced romantic love. I've always had crushes on people, and I think it's easy to develop a crush. And even when people say love at first sight, I think it's a big lie because it's physical attraction at first sight. You don't go into a bar and see someone and say, hey, that guy has a great sense of community. That guy is really brilliant. You say, they got it. that guy looks hot, you know? So I think it's attraction at first sight. It's not love at first sight. Many times I've been hurt by love. Because you think you really know somebody, you think you really love that person, but it turned out to be something so different. So. You know. I have been hurt by love two years ago. My first love. I think I've developed love for a few friends and it's one of those situations where your trust, it kind of disappears because something someone said or something someone did. And so in that case, I, I guess I have been. Love is just a feeling of deep, deep caring about someone. A lot of times it's, um, it's acceptance. It's accepting someone unconditionally. It's appreciating someone for who they are, their unique person. Um, 
no matter what mistakes they've made or what flaws they have. I do see a difference and I feel like there's a difference in the way that males and females are awarded here at North Rondell. I think that um, the girls achieve excellently and come time when it's time for them to be awarded, they get the minimum, well not the minimum, they get what they deserve, such as their pins or their arm sweaters. And as far as the males, when they achieve, I feel like they get you know, uh, one assembly where it was a time where they receive money. I don't really see a difference in the way uh, the students are awarded. What we do have, though, is historically a tremendous difference in the performance of our female versus our male students. If we look at some of the data from the school, what we discover is that a lot of our male students have grade point averages which are significantly lower than the grade point averages of our female students. Male, in this school, most males aren't really particularly fond, of, well not fond, but they don't really get awarded for being achieved, and it's, male achievement is low, basically. And um, when we do excel or uh, achieve, achieve, so to speak, when we do achieve, so to speak, um, we, we get a little bit extra just to let us know that you know people are actually um, out there working for us. The female students are, um having far more achievement than the males are, so the females are receiving far more awards than the males are. I think there needs to be more open dialogue about what the issues are so that people can understand that it's not just a day-to-day a, a -day kind of thing. We're trying to fix the long term. We're not trying to slow anybody down. We're trying to get the young men to be able to step up even more rapidly so that I know, you know, I'm a married African-American man. I love my wife. I love the children we've generated, okay? But I think she'd like to have an African-American man at some point in her future, you know, if I'm looking at my daughter, she'd like to find one who would have those characteristics. I do believe that it's expected for females to achieve more than males because it's, um, how you say, like society sets up, society sets up a whole factor that uh, males, are, like most black males are going to fail anyway and they set us up to fail anyway. So being that we, being that we are perplexed to fail or have the, or how you say, already like conditioned or moved, or mo uh, molded to be molded to, towards failure. It's gonna. I think that I think that when guys do achieve, more people would be more likely to you know stand up and make that praise. There's a, a high expectation here at NLCP for the women. <laughs> No. No. We find that there's a seven to one ratio in terms of the uh, young women at our school doing so much better academically than the young men are doing. I guess a good way to change it would be um, to have to have better 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 things for the girls. Then, if the girls feel like they're being treated unfair, I think that you know we should give them a chance, hear them out, you know, and and give them a chance to be heard. 
I don't think that there's a program here for the women um, to achieve in school like men exceed the norm because only because um, some of the elders in our school, the adults and the females, um, a lot of them do have things to do as far as outside of North Lawndale and in order to in order to get this program uh, where we can have one like men exceeding the norm, I feel like a lot of time and effort needs to be put forward to it. In order for there to be a program like men exceeding the norm, I think a group of young ladies need to come together and demand, demand this. Well, there are programs here for the girls. There's um, Creed. Creed is the program that actually helped uh, minority men get started, which was based off a uh, girl administration. There's also Beautiful Youth that uh, does things as well, but they not those organizations aren't aren't the same thing as minority men. I think that there needs to be a program here for women, exactly or almost the same like minority men seem to know. Um, yeah, we can we can have one. It would be like the sisterhood, could be like a fraternity and sorority thing. So why not? Whenever you have interaction with the police, especially a person of color, black man, you know, tense up because of the history as far as the uh, treatment of African American men uh, with the police. I feel that police don't have the right to like profile or you know to, um, point me out or single me out, you know, just because of. I got a hoodie on it just because I got a skull cap on it just because my pants is back. I don't expect them or uh, trust them to protect and serve as they say as far as when it's concerning people of color. You know, they protect and serve out there in the suburbs. What would happen if four black cops beat up on a 13 year old little white boy? And you know, the little kids, you know, they see their mamas and their aunties, you know, hollering at the police, you know, trying to get them off there. So the little kids, you know, trying to help their family, you know what I'm saying? And the police actually spit in the little girl's face. Their interactions with, with young people, they do not expect them to know them, so they, you know, stump all over their rights and assume that, you know, all young people are ignorant to those things and, you know, the police feel they can do as they, as they wish with no consequences. When me and my friends got harassed, we was just walking down the street, you know, I was coming from the house, we were just walking, I was about to go to his house. So we was just walking, and the police rolled past the first time and flashed the light at us. We paid no mind, so we just kept walking. Then they came back again, and they was like, don't move. And so we just stood there, and then they grabbed both of us and slammed us to the ground. So they got to checking us down, and then he asked me my name. I gave him my name, and I think he went in the car and looked it up on the computer. He was like, you lucky. I'm like, I gave him to look like, why? He, he was like, yeah, you better be lucky that you don't have no criminal record or anything because I was gonna put something on you. I wish, you know, we could have, the kids could have cameras and show the world what they see because then the world will see that a lot of things have not changed from, you know, the 60s or during the uh, early 1900s and you know our kids really treat it as if they have no rights. Uh I am aware that there are bad and crooked cops out there, but there are police officers out there, like my father, a former uh, Chicago police officer, out there that will do your job and make the city of Chicago or any city uh, a better place. Yeah. But you're gonna have corrupt policemen or corrupt people in any business you go into. That's just that's just life. That's just how it is. The criminal justice system is complex. It begins with the policeman. So the policeman has become the tangible target for all of your grievances. He was a great police officer. He didn't get any badge of honor and things like that. He just liked doing his job. But in, until 1993, he um, got shot um, patrolling the projects uh, at Caprini Green. And um, ever since 1993, in that day, he just quit the police force. We need the right kind of police. We need the right kind of black police in the black community. 
You need the right kind of white police in the white community. I think that people just, in general, they just get what they believe from their families because maybe their families had to go through certain situations with the policemen. So I think it's, it all has to do with family and history. But you also see um, people who don't know how to handle police and, and really don't know how to handle authority at all. I think the police force does to you is it basically gets you, like makes you aware on the streets more, even if you are on or off duty, it makes you more aware and it makes you protect your family and other people more, more seriously and things like that. We have to learn to organize and understand the legitimacy of it. Now, if you were involved in organizing, my young brother, then a police confrontation would allow you to do what, what the officer's saying because you know you organize. See, we set up here all day and say, I'm anti this, I'm anti that. But it's irresponsible to talk about something. If you're against something, what are you for? If you're going to be against something, see, revolution is about building rather than destroying. If the system is corrupt, it has built-in contradictions that will bring about its own inevitable destruction. Quote, Fred Hammond. For decades, powerful black women have been leading our generation in the fields of education, medicine, law, and their households, even though they were denied equal rights to sexism and culture. We asked a few people what makes a black powerful woman. Let's hear what they had to say. I do believe in black women being powerful. Um, why? Because um, historically black women have been powerful. We have the backbone of um, the African American race. Um, we've had to be powerful in order to lead our families. Um, currently, there's an inordinate amount of African American male, men, African American men who aren't leading our families. So African American women have to be head of household. Title, but she also puts her own needs to the side for other people, you know? I'm talking about the, the half of uh, the, the uh, black powerful women. That I believe black women are powerful. It's just some, it's mentally, they think they need a man to do whatever they want to do. And it's not always that. Some women can do anything, probably better than a man. Uh, as far as them being powerful, we have overcome a lot of things. It's just now we need to gain more respect for, for each other. Things that a black powerful woman should have is the ability to stand up for herself, to have her own beliefs to be a good role model to younger people. Being a black woman myself, I, I need to look up to somebody to, you know, motivate me. Intellect, um, uh, sympathy, compassion, understanding. I think those are my qualities for uh, black women and the, their aspirations of power. be able to not rely on my teachers no more because in eighth grade, it's feel as though my teachers carried me. And now that I'm in high school, it's like, I gotta rely on myself. When I first entered college years ago, I, um, there was some def definitely some difficulties regarding like financial aid and stuff like that. And, but I was motivated to finish school and I, I wanted to stay at the school that I was at. So I made sure that I did everything in my power to get whatever financial aid that I need. Being pregnant because 
like most people think that you is unable to control or whatever, and they end up having abortions and all that. And it's not always that, cause I know a couple of girls that got kids, went on to college, got them a nice house. I believe it's important to have powerful black women, but also just powerful women in general because the world is, is filled with so many powerful men who feel like they have to run everything. So you need that balance. You need women who are powerful and can have a positive influence. Today's society, I think having a powerful black woman in your neighborhood, in your home is important because most females they get insecure about themselves and everything, and they don't have a female role model to be able to talk to. Yes, I do think having a black, powerful woman in today's society is important because it gives the younger generation a good focus on ways that they could become a better person. Is tagging artistic or gang related? Is it creative or vandalism? What purpose does it serve? My idea is about tagging is that um, people that might not have a place or see a place where people belong want to put their stamp or brand name on it. On a train, you would look down over to your right and you would see a six point star. I mean, big, all the time, in the middle of the school grounds. That was their territory. So you tag our school, it's gone the next day. I'm sorry that it upsets you, but uh, find another place to tag. And if anybody came and, and did anything to it, Within hours, it would be freshly done over, you know, so that would let you know that them cats weren't playing. But in terms of tagging and like just writing your gang sign or what have you, um, there's kind of a fine line where maybe sometimes it's just someone writing their name or their symbol or their, or their, their block versus having that block have its own like logo or design or some image that represents it. Only the travelers, they have tagged uh, the areas. Um, Folk on the hustlers all through Madison and Chicago Avenue have tagged the areas. Uh, the conservatives of Cicero have tagged the areas. Uh, the undertakers of Cicero and Gladys have tagged the areas. Um, me, personally, uh, Chicago Avenue, Madison, Laramie, uh, the Horner, uh, Rockwell, yeah, those, those are some places that I, I have uh, put uh, my tags on. There's the difference between marking your territory and creating some beauty within, within that space. The tagging is to name a boundary as belonging to the gangster disciples and therefore uh, causes peril for people coming in who aren't a GD. Uh, GD, then, then the tagging is destructive. So. Uh, there's a tagging inspired by some gang affiliation that's truly art, and then it's a way of establishing lines between gangs, and I think they cross the line, because it's more about violence than it is uh, self-expression. I think the ga gang-related ones are kind of stupid, for the most part. I, I mean, they're not really very creative, they're not really artistic. It's just like a dog marking territory. I mean, on my block, there's like, having street boys rule. I mean, it's kind of silly. Well, graffiti to me, in some ter some areas of the city of Chicago, is art, and there's some that's gang activities, territorial. You know what I'm saying? There's uh, memorials of people that's been around for years in neighborhoods. You know, I mean, it, it has its negative when it's when it's got to do black on black on black crime. You know, but then it also it has a good thing. In it. We got Dr. King, we got Malcolm X, you know, some that the kids can, can, can grow from. Art shouldn't kill. Art should uh, be an uplift and not to something that uh, breaks people down and causes uh, pain and tragedy. Niggas talking it but ain't living it. Crystal pop, I'm sipping it. Mob hats and lizard shit. Gator chunks, bitch. Rolling blunts with the williest of the willies.
hits link top, them ones and nine lilies. Stories like a motherfucker. Model bitches wondering if I'm a fuck with her. She know I treat When I hear the term element of the streets, I think of the good and I think of the bad. Uh, of course, you think of gangs, uh, you think of drug dealing and things like that. But you also got to think about the good things. You got a lot of people that contribute to different communities and things like that. So you got to look at both, both aspects of it. Uh, what it brings to mind for me is two facts. There is ups and downs in the street. One is good, one is evil. And I think that a lot of it is taking place today in our streets. And we need to really reach out to the streets more as ministers in my position. We have to bring a more positive role from the church outside to the streets. All, um, all the activity in the neighborhood, on the blocks, outside, and on the corners, things that are happening outside of school, outside of homes, um, and other community agencies. The trouble, lost kids, uh, I don't know, dangerous situations, kids not thinking right. Um, I don't think they ever gonna change because they don't have no influence. People influence them, but they just. They just don't want to do it. They always want to do it out there, be on the street, and do their games and stuff. Um, I uh, do not think that the games on the street will change for the simple fact that most of the time, most games are for all bad. I really don't think they're going to change. No. This is getting worse and worse. The reason kids are joining games, from my experience, is because there's a lot of excitement in it initially. And we think it's cool because we are supported. By the lack of love at home and attention and trying to find somebody to love them, trying to fit in. Popularity, they, they just want to be popular and be cool and like do what other people do. They think they, that's how they're going to fit in. Some, I think, yeah, I think some parents just ain't there. Yes, I think they care. I, I think you have at least 90% of the parents out there that truly care. And uh, of course you have another 10% that are probably busy with other things or have issues that they're dealing with themselves. But for the most part, yes, I think they care. Well, I know they do because my parents cared and I was gang affiliated when I was a kid. and and my mother prayed for me every day. So it wasn't like if we had better parents in the home, then our kids wouldn't be the way they are, but we choose the direction we take. And I chose to be uh, involved with gangs because as I indicated, it, you know, it had the pleasures that go with it, but it was only for a season. Some care and some probably don't care. Like some of their parents probably drug addicts, probably crackheads or hype or anything. And like the other people that care, they probably caring about them, telling them, but they just not listening. They still on their own road doing what they want to do. Yeah, they are influenced by it. I think that you have to really be focused and have a made up mind. You have to understand who you are and you have to not want to be like someone else. Some kids don't want to be in the game, but they don't want to act like they can't fit in or they don't want to be singled out as like a nerd or a loser or, you know, lonely. So they just try to hang around just to fit in what they think was right. A group of kids helping each other. That's the positive thing about it. Like they looking for each other back. But when they look for each other back, they going against other people. But you're supposed to love your enemies. 
but they they not loving their enemies. They hating their enemies. Because God say you're supposed to love each and every everybody, but they only love the people who are in the same game, helping each other back. They're not loving um, everybody. Uh, I think they're uh, bad on one, one behalf, but I also think they're good because it's giving uh, them family, you know, somebody that they can go to and say, I need this, I need that. Uh, so I think it's a 50-50 of being good and bad. Uh, I think of like a lot of crackheads, uh, poor people, um, uh, kids on the street selling drugs, dropouts, drug dealers. That's what I think of when you say elements of the street. Unfortunately now, most of your gangs in our community are, are doing some negative activities. So, uh, you know, it's hard to say, but, uh, you know, it's disappointing because I think they have so much power and they can do so much to help our community, but they just... I think that gangs are very destructive and it brings a lot of trauma and hurt to families because so many of our black young men in our community where I live are dying. And the reason they are dying is because of drugs and violence and there's so many families that are really torn apart because of the hurt that they experience through the violence of murder and drugs. And it's an epidemic. And by that being said, it's an epidemic because the young people now in our community, they don't have the resources that they need to turn away from it where they figure dealing drugs is the only solution to have money and you know they are influenced by their surroundings. I've been in jail one time and I'll never go back. I've seen it with my own eyes, people getting shot and stuff like that and I said no I don't want that to be me. Everywhere you go there is violence, drugs, when I was 17, I got shot eight times. Um, well, I was in the gang when I was 12. I'm just that I didn't have nobody to tell me from right to wrong. I got into a lot of trouble. I had to jump out of school. I had to leave the state, a lot of things like that. Well, when I was nine, I got blessed into a gang. That means like they blessed you and you don't gotta get violated then. And I was in a gang for seven years. And by the age of 10, I already had a, I already had a criminal record that nobody could imagine of. It was me and my cousin, we were walking to, to pick some of them. And they popped out in a car and they started shooting at us. They pointed a gun to my chest and they told me, give me your, give me your money and everything you have. So I gave it to them. They got the bling bling, but they ain't show how they got it. Being the gangs, you gotta deal with the consequences you gotta go through. They get you into trouble, they mess up your life. When I got around like 10, 10 to around like 15, staying with my grandmother, I used to get in a lot of fights. My life wasn't too good when I started off in the gang because I got expelled from school. I started hanging around with my friends. I had, I had a friend in that school that was a uh, game banger too and we both got expelled, I came out and I started hanging out with my friends and I wasn't thinking at the time. As I was getting older I realized that hey I need an education. Don't join gangs because if you do you end up getting killed, going to jail or paralyzed. Don't give in because if you give in then people won't believe in you. Listen to your mom because she tells the truth. She knows right from wrong. Don't feed off into peer pressure because kids your age will get you in trouble or you'll be in the wrong place at the wrong time and you go to jail. My advice for the kids is don't drop out of school. Your future depends on your education. Don't do drugs. If you do drugs, some drugs can 
make you commit suicide. Some drugs could get you to cause accidents or get girls pregnant or catch a disease or even worse, you can overdose, you know, die. Don't get distracted because when you get distracted, you lose your focus. And when you lose your focus, you lose your train of thought. And if you lose your train of thought, then you're lost. And you shouldn't be lost in a world like this. Mm. Don't do drugs, because if you do drugs, it'll mess up your body and you won't be able to think in school. Don't do drugs, because if you do, you can end up dead and you could be crazy. I hope that will change for me will be myself. You know, leave all this stuff behind, all this game banging stuff, everything. Um, I would like to change like with my mother, help her out and stuff like that. And help others out. Finish high school and look for a job or part-time at least to pay my education for college and be a better person in my life. I see myself with my own business, riding around my truck, my my name on there, saying, saying what type of trade or whatever I took up. I want to graduate and go to college and want to be a social worker. If you grew up wrong, you could you know motivate him to live the rest of his life in a good way and to reach out to others and help them. And even though I act crazy, I gotta thank the Lord that you made me. There are no words that can express how I feel. You never kept a secret. Always stayed real, and I appreciate. Hey, so how's your day feel? It was it was alright. Um, today we did our college applications, and on my birth certificate it said that my father was Glenn. So who the hell is Glenn? Well, Glenn is your real father. I didn't really want to tell you about him because he was real trifling to me when I was pregnant with you. But if you want to hear the story, you know I'd tell you because it all started back when I was four months pregnant. Hey, we gotta talk. Talk about what? That damn baby. Why? I ain't trying to raise no kid. kid. We can't afford it. If we try, maybe we can afford this baby. Ain't no try. I ain't trying to raise no child right How now. How come? Because I'm still young, you young. We, we both. So, but you shit. put in on this baby in the first place. I ain't putting in on shit. How come? You lay down there with me. Okay. I'm protected. Oh, no, we was protected. Yeah, so, what happened then? Hey, mistakes happen. I can't afford to raise no damn baby. Well, I'm going to have this baby with the rest of Oh, you're not. Now, yes, listen, I you, you ain't having that damn baby because we can't afford to raise no fucking child. If you try to hurt me or my baby, I will kill you. Oh, you, you're going to pull a knife? I'm supposed to be scared of a fucking knife. I'll be on the block all damn day. Come on. Hell, you think you're going? You're going to learn to stop fucking playing with me. Not try to have your baby. So do you understand? That's why I really didn't want to tell you about your father. Because he did all these things to me while I was pregnant. Do you understand? Yeah. When I see him, I'm going to whoop his ass. No, don't do that because he got what he deserved. He don't see you or nothing. So he's really feeling the pain. Why you didn't tell me early? Well, I'm sorry, sir. If you can make it through the night, there's a brighter day. Everything will be alright if you hold on. It's a struggle every day, gotta roll on. And there's no way I could pay you back. But my plan is to show you that I understand. You all appreciate it. You only have one heart. You only have one heart. You only have
for watching Who's Side. We'll catch you later. <laughs>